you for joining us today. This is Stephen Day, new business manager at FileMaker, and I'm excited to be your host for today's Idea to iPad web seminar, where we will build a custom business solution from scratch and deploy it to an iPad using your responses from questions submitted prior to this live event. We're also joined today with Ryan Minook, solution consultant at FileMaker, who will be building the live FileMaker solution using the newly released FileMaker 13. But before we get started, I have some brief housekeeping notes. For the best experience, we strongly recommend that you participate in this web seminar with at least a broadband connection. If you uh, experience any problems or require online assistance at any time, please contact Citrix Technical Support at 888-259-8414. During today's presentation, you will have an opportunity to type in questions. Let's talk briefly about how to enter a question. Go to the control panel, click on the question section, and enter your question and send. We will cover as many questions as time allows at the end of our presentation. Now I'll hand over the presentation to Ryan Manuk to build our custom solution. Thanks, Stephen. And again, thank all of you for the submissions that you sent for today's Idea to iPad demonstration. We've been getting a lot. Uh, this uh, webinar is... Uh, you know, the participation, participation rate from you guys has been really high. And, uh, you know, from the pool of the existing ideas from all of our Idea to iPad webinars, we selected to demo one of the most popular requests. And just as a heads up, FileMaker will continue holding Idea to iPad events in the future. So if your idea wasn't selected this time, keep submitting them for use as a potential demo. And while your case may differ from the one shown today, we'll still be covering some common, te uh, common techniques and features that you can still apply to your solution. So, we received a wide range of uh, use cases similar to the topics shown here, but the winning submission is a contact management solution. Now, a lot of us in our everyday lives have to manage people, and the possibilities of a contact management solution are endless. Maybe you want to track distributors you're purchasing from. You know, maybe you're an artist selling work and you want to track your network of friends and buyers. But today what we're going to do is we're going to build a staffing solution focusing on the uh, temp list. Now, wouldn't it be great if we had the power to build a custom solution that meets the functionality that we want? That gives us access on the go and visibility of the information whenever we want it, when we want it. And that's our goal for today. That's our challenge. We want to take the idea of a mobile contact solution and help guide you down the first steps to building and deploying your own custom solution. So we'll begin our demo, and before we jump into that, I just want to um, uh, give you an idea of what our roadmap for today is going to be, all right? And our first part is uh, focusing on the power to create our own custom solutions, okay? Uh, adding the functionality that we want, aligning the file makers' features with uh, our needs as a company. So let's go ahead and jump out of this PowerPoint slide, and I'm going to launch FileMaker Pro Advanced. And first thing I'm going to do is just create a brand new database okay and we'll call this um, staffing solution I'll click save now before we begin building let's go ahead and let's create a story so that we can really uh, provide some context for what we're gonna do today and let's go ahead and uh, I'll need a, a name from our attendee list here I'll go ahead and choose uh, let's use Barry all right Let's say that Barry is an owner at a staffing company and he's been burned many times because he hasn't had access to his uh, solution after hours or before hours when a company needed to fill a position. So he wants a solution that he can access on the go and have up-to-date information. So that's what we're going to attempt to do today. Okay. First thing we need to do is make sure that we can create the workflow that Barry needs for uh, his uh, staffing solution on the go. So what I'm going to do is we go to uh, layouts and I'm going to just uh, select new layout report and I get this new layout wizard. I'm just going to call this temp uh, details. Okay. And we're building for an iOS solution. So I'm going to choose a touch device and select iPad, iPad mini. I'm going to choose to build a form. And then finally, I can choose to build in portrait mode or landscape mode. And in this scenario, I'm going to choose landscape mode and I'm going to click finish. So what happens? FileMaker gives us this layout that's designed um, for the dimensions of the iPad in the landscape mode, okay? And it's also given us this nice touch theme. We can change that if we want. But the difference here between the touch and the themes without touch, you can 
you can tell that the touch has larger font, larger objects, just like you would expect in an iOS solution. Okay, so we'll just stick with what we have here, the inline touch, and click OK. You'll notice that when uh, we launch Font Maker and create a new database for the first time, we also have this field picture uh, object right here. Okay, and kind of access this from this button right here. And this allows us to start building some database schema based off of the current table that is created when we create a new database. And to get a better view of that, I can click on this little database button right here. It takes us to the Manage Database window. And there's a few more options. I can create more tables. I can create some fields associated with those tables. And I can create some relationships. The first thing I'm going to do in this um, tables uh, menu is just change the uh, table name to make it a little bit more um, applicable to uh, this particular table. So I'm going to call this Templist. And I'll change that. And then I'll click OK. And back to my field picker, we can now start to adding some fields to this table. So what are some things that we want to track? Well, we probably first want to start off with a uh, temp ID. Okay, We want to make sure that everyone is going to be unique. So I'm going to change that to a number. And then we can control click this temp ID and select field options. I want to make sure that every time a record is created, we have a serial number on auto enter. And it's incremented by one. So we can always verify that the ID is unique. And then we probably want to track some typical things like the first name, right? And I'll change this to text. And the last name. And how about the full name? And I'm going to change this to the calculation uh, field type, OK? And this is our calculation window in FileMaker. A little bit daunting at first, but really what we're looking at, we're looking at the fields currently in the table, some operators, and we have a list of uh, preset functions in FileMaker. Okay, so we can combine all of these with you know, even literal text and form different expressions and get different results. But in this scenario, all I want to say is to get a full name, give me the value in the first name and a space in between, and add the last name. Okay, and I'll click OK. And that's how we create a calculation in FileMaker. So let's keep building out. We'll cancel that out. So we have a text. We probably want a ranking, an internal ranking of these um, uh, temps as well so that we make sure that we're giving the best uh, uh, temps to our best um, clients. Okay. Probably want an address field. Where is the temp located, right? City, state, zip code, pretty standard stuff. Then we probably want to track their home phone number mobile phone how about a main email an alternate email okay and it's also important that we track um, what level of education they've completed okay so we'll say education completed we'll keep that as a text field as well and we, we want to give the uh, the temp a few options to list uh, where they um, studied so we'll do education one, two, education three. And then every time we uh, interview a temp, we have them come into our company, right? And Barry gives them uh, a few different software tests. So one, he wants to know how uh, many words they can type for, uh, per minute, right? So we'll log the typing score and then the different types of software that they test the temps with. So we'll say software one score and software two score. Okay, and then it's really important that we um, track the status if they're available, if they're currently employed. Okay, and if so, who is their current employer? Okay, and then Barry also wants to make sure uh, he tracks their pay type, if they're hourly or sal uh, salary and wage. And then finally, Barry wants to make sure that we have an option to store their resume in his solution. Okay, and for that, I'm going to change this field type to a container field. And a container field allows me to store uh, uh, files, PDF fi uh, files, uh, sound files, media files, things like that. All right. So I think that's a pretty good start in terms of the structure on the back end of the things that uh, Barry is going to want to track for his staffing solution. Okay. Now, in order to get these fields over onto the layout, it's pretty simple. All we need to do is just highlight a field and just drag it right on over to the layout. Again, just highlight a few fields. Okay, I'm going to use the shift key to grab a bunch at a time. 
And we can also specify down at the bottom where do we want the fields, uh, how do we want the fields placed? We want them horizontally? Do we want any labels at all above the field or to the left? Uh, we're just going to keep it vertical and have the labels above. And Barry can just drag those fields right onto the layout, just like that. You'll see these blue lines that are appearing. Those are what we call dynamic guides. They help you align the fields so you can do it really quickly. Okay, so do you want to extend the layout? Let's not extend the layout. Let's just grab um, a few of these. Let's see how that works. Okay. that easy just a few uh, clicks and a few drags and we already have the start of our solution okay now one thing you'll notice is that we have a lot of fields uh, in this field picker in this table okay and we could essentially drag all of these fields right onto this layout but that probably may not be the, the most efficient way to look at uh, or to represent our data you know it seems to be a, a huge data dump on the layout there's got to be a way that we can really maximize the space on the iOS. And luckily with FileMaker 13, we have these really great features that allow you to do so. So what I'm going to do is, let's go ahead and I'm just going to highlight all of these fields and delete them. I'm going to use this brand new feature in FileMaker 13 called Popover Buttons. Okay, And these are something that you'll find um, in your iOS solutions or even on the web. These are really standard. So what a popover button is, essentially what it looks like, okay? Anytime that you click on this button right here, another window will appear. So how can we use this in our solution? What we can do is essentially just create this popover button. We can uh, decide to break down our fields in different types of um, uh, categories, show the important information that we want to show um, on top of the button, and then in the popover window, we can have all of the other fields appear. So, for example... Actually, you know what, before we do that, let's go ahead and I'm going to create this square right here on the left-hand side of our solution. And this way, I really want to stand out uh, where the navigation is in our solution, okay? So we have that square. I'm going to bring up the inspector. And in this thing, we have a few different style choices for a square. Maybe we want that accent color blue, green, uh, red. There's a little mustard here. I'm going to choose gradient one, okay? So that looks pretty good so far. Now let's go back to our popover button. Okay, select popover button. And I'm just going to draw this right on top here. Okay. And now we can specify, hey, do you want to give this uh, window a title? Well, for sure. Let's go ahead and call this uh, general info. All right. Yeah, we want to show the title bar. We can choose where we want uh, the window to appear in relation to the button, but we like where it is to the uh, right of that button. So we'll just cancel out of that okay the uh, window now takes our general info and let's take this window and drag it out a little bit more and let's go ahead and grab some fields again I'm just gonna choose I see first name I'm gonna use uh, the command or control key on Windows to grab a few uh, fields alright and then we'll drag them right into our window just like that okay so how does that work again right now uh, we can't see that window. We click on this. Um, uh, I'm sorry. Let's go to uh, browse mode. Okay. Click on that button, and we have that nice window appear again. A great way to uh, maximize the space on your iOS solution. And you'll see this again in a lot of iOS solutions and over the web. Uh, maybe in in a menu at the top, you'll you'll click on it on a uh, like a little button, and you'll have a window appear below it with the diff uh, different types of navigation options. But in this scenario, where you just want to show uh, the most important information uh, this is a uh, really good fit okay so let's go back to uh, layout mode again this is the mode where we can uh, design the layout so we have the information that we want in the pop-up window now we have to determine what can we do in terms of uh, the button and the information that we want to show on that button um, before we do that let's go ahead and uh, format that a bit I'm gonna go back to the inspector okay and I'm gonna go to the appearance tab And there's a few things I want to do I want to make sure uh, in the status, I'm just going to choose uh, none, okay, for normal. Uh, when the button is hovered over, I'm going to choose none as well. And pressed, I don't want anything. And in focus, okay, we have none listed there as well. Perfect. Then in normal, let's go ahead and remove all of the lines, but only include the bottom one, okay. And then finally, 
we've changed this default style and I want to go ahead and save this as a new style and call this uh, Ryan's button and click OK. OK, this is a brand new feature in 13 which is really uh, um, saves you a lot of time in terms of formatting and now when we create new buttons we'll be able to choose this uh, option and adopt the changes right off the fly okay so I like um, the way that's currently formatted now what can we do about uh, the information here well let's go ahead and I'm gonna create a label that says general info okay and I'm just gonna put that right over top of my button center that using the dynamic guides okay and then I'm gonna create a little bit more labels I'm gonna say name okay and we'll create this on the side first and I'm going to say uh, location okay and then I'm going to put uh, ranking all right use the dynamic guys to align these okay all right now the next thing I'm going to do is use uh, merge fields okay so I go to the insert menu and select merge field and in doing so, I can see all of the fields that I just created. And what merge fields allow you to do is just grab the value of those fields. And that's going to be, um, you know, you can use those in uh, letters, emails, uh, templates, things like that. For something like this where we just want to show information on top of a button, uh, this is perfect. So for the name, I'm going to choose uh, full name. Okay. And drag that out a bit. Align that with my name. And for location... I think we're going to need another calculation here. So let's go ahead and create a new field, okay? And we'll call this location, and I'll change this to a calculation. And I really just want to put the city in state so that well, when Barry looks at uh, the customer's um, customer's record, he knows automatically, okay, he's in a city that's located right where my client uh, is located or close enough that it'll be a good match, right? So I'm going to say in this scenario, uh, give me the value of the city and give me a comma and a space and concatenate that with the state. And the value result should be uh, text. So click OK. All right. So let's go back to the insert merge field and bring the location calculation listed here. Bring that out a bit. Okay, and we'll do the merge field again for the ranking. And again, the ranking is, or I mean, um, the merge field is just grabbing the values of the fields. All right, it looks pretty good so far. So let's go ahead and grab all of these fields and put them right over top of our button. Okay, now you'll notice one thing uh, right off the bat. We have uh, text layering over text, right? In in uh, this scenario, if we don't have a value for location, you know that's probably not going to be a problem uh, because we'll be able to see that general info. But that general info uh, is always going to be listed there um, uh, behind uh, this value. So what can we do about that? And we probably don't want this name, location, and ranking to appear as well if these values are are, are empty. So we're going to use another feature uh, in Font Maker 13 called um, Object Visibility. So for this general info, I'm going to go to the Inspector tab, okay, and uh, click on the Data tab, and we have this option right here in the Behavior section, Hide Object When. So let's click on that um, pencil icon, and hey, here we are again to the FileMaker uh, calculation window. So essentially what I want to say is please hide that general info label when the following is not empty. That's why I have not is empty. Okay, I'll say the first name, and last name, and C state. And I think it's pretty good so far. Okay, first name, last name, C state. Click OK. All right. Now, what can we do about uh, these labels here? Okay, put some object visibility on that. So for the name label, I want to say, uh, please hide that object. If uh, the first name, uh, last name are empty, and the location, please hide this when 
We'll grab the is empty function again. City and state. State are empty. And then ranking. We'll say is empty. Ranking. Okay. So if there's no value in that ranking, do not show this label. Right? We don't have to do anything to these merge fields because, again, this is only pulling the values. So if there's no value in the field, it's not going to show anyway. So Let's go ahead and bring this over here, okay? Right on top of our button, all right? And the final thing I want to do is just create a small little edit label, okay? And we'll bring up the text formatting, change that to font 12, okay? And we'll choose a lighter color. We'll put that up at the top. And this is just a visual so that our users know, hey, if you uh, tap on this button, you can edit this information. Okay. And then the final thing, I want to uh, click on the uh, button and go back to the inspector position tab. And I want to make sure that the button is on top of everything. Okay. So that's stacked on top of everything. All right. So. Let's jump into browse mode and see what we just uh, see the result of what we just did. Okay, so I'm going to exit this layout, click save, and browse mode is where we're able to uh, enter and modify data. Right off the bat, we see that general info, right? The name, location, and ranking are, are not listed here. Okay, so uh, let's create a new record, and if we click on the general info, we now have that popover window, right? And all of these fields. So let's go ahead and type a name, Ryan. There we go. General, notice that the general info has now disappeared, and we have uh, this name in the merge field appear here. All right, I'm going to leave ranking. Um, uh, I'm going to leave that blank for now. Let's see an address, 5201 Patrick Henry Drive. All right, Santa Clara, California. Oh, Santa Clara, California. Location appears, 95050. All right, just like that. Just in a, a matter of minutes, I mean, maybe two, three minutes without us talking, we're able to really create this nice um, uh, solution. We're able to maximize the space on our iOS and have this nice navigation so window can, you know, uh, so Barry can, uh, you know, really um, uh, focus on the important things uh, in his uh, staffing solution. All right, so what I'm going to do at this time, I'm going to go ahead, so jump back into layout mode. I'm going to close uh, this solution out that we just created, okay? And I'm going to Julia Childs a little bit that section. So I'm going to open up this uh, other database that I created here, okay? And uh, all I did was essentially repeated those efforts into um, uh, other buttons, okay? So, for example, contact info. Here's the home phone and the, uh, the emails. The academic history. We have our education information. And then this test scores. This is where Barry can view uh, the software scores and, and uh, words per minute. Okay, so if you go to layout mode, again, this is um, essentially just what we've done. Okay, object visibility on the um, the labels and uh, the main um, uh, button category, and then just uh, pop over buttons with the fields. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so let's keep building out. Let's go back to Field Picker, and we have a few more uh, things that we want to make sure that uh, we're capturing. Again, uh, the status, the current employer, pay type, and wage. So let's go ahead and uh, highlight those. All right, and I'm going to drag them right over into the layout again. All right, we can use those dynamic guides to align a little bit. Okay, let me just highlight these fields over here and bring them over just like that. Okay, and. I think I want to bring these guys down a little bit, so I'm just going to highlight all of them and bring them down. Okay, so status, pay type, uh, current employer, and wage. Sounds pretty good. Now, how can we capture the, the resume? Well, first thing we can do is maybe we could have a, a big uh, container field here and uh, put the resume in there. But, um, you know, there's other things that we want to track uh, on this uh, layout. And 
instead of having to create multiple layouts, I'm going to go ahead and uh, use another uh, feature, and this is brand new 13 as well, that allows us to save some uh, um, space and maximize, you know, the uh, uh, iOS landscape. So um, up in the uh, um, formatting bar here, if I just click and hold this tab control, I have this option for a slide control, okay? And I'm just going to draw that right out onto my layout. And if you've, uh, again, if you used iOS or the web, you've, uh, these should be pretty uh, familiar to you, okay? So this slide control is essentially, by default, we get these three panels, okay? You can add as many panels as you want. And in this scenario, I'm just going to uh, bring it down to two, okay? And uh, essentially, you can put whatever objects, you know, portals, uh, you know, a web viewer, whatever you want uh, on a panel and have it act as its own space, okay? And then if I jump to panel one, for example, I'm only going to see the objects and fields that I placed on panel one. So, uh, and then we can also select uh, uh, enable swipe gestures, which allow you on the iOS to swipe through these um, uh, these these panels. On uh, it's it's not uh, available for trackpads or things like that. It's strictly for the iOS. But uh, considering that's where we're going, that's what we want. So for the first slide, let's go ahead and I'm going to call this notes because we do want to track the notes, and we're going to come back to this. But for now, let's go ahead and select that. I'm going to jump back to my uh, inspector and choose styles. And there's a different types of looks we have for text uh, blocks. I'm going to choose this uh, notes, uh, the screen notes here, and I'm just going to blow that up a little bit. Let's do uh, maybe a 24 font. Okay. Put that in the center. All right, so we have notes, and we'll come back to that. All right, Barry really wants us to um, store the resume listed here. Okay, so let's do the same thing. Let's create a text block here that says resume. We'll choose the accent two. Okay, and we'll put this at a twenty-four font, uh, font as well. Then center that using the dynamic guides. Okay. Now, we're going to go over to the field picker with our resume container field and just drag that right over onto our slide control. Okay. Looks like we still have those labels. I'll get rid of that. Let's bring that up a bit. All right. And let's go. While this is highlighted, let's bring up the inspector, and I'm going to go to the data tab, and I'm going to make this an interactive uh, container field, okay? So that way, when I have um, uh, temp submit a PDF of the resume, I'll be able to uh, view it right within this container field. So I'll choose uh, interactive content, okay? Looks pretty good so far. And let's go ahead and uh, we'll personalize this a little bit. Let's go ahead and take our staffing logo. Okay. And we can put that right in the header. Just like that. Perfect. And let's go ahead and add a title. We'll say um, Staffing Templist. And let's make that guy 36 point. Okay. So let's jump back to browse mode and um, take a look at what we've built so far. So save these changes. Okay. So we have those nice popovers. Okay. We have uh, a nice view of the status of this temp, if they're available or not. We have a notes section here, which will build out. And then we can uh, quickly view uh, the, uh, the resume. Let's go ahead and take a resume sample and just drag that right into the uh, container field and there you go just like that we can view the resume right within that container field so Barry can quickly search for his, uh, his temps see if they're a good fit and also get a quick look of uh, the resume as well okay so Final thing we want to do for the workflow, Barry wants to make sure that he's able to contact these uh, employees, okay? 
he wants to make sure that uh, you know not only can he um, call them, he wants to be able to email them directly within the solution. So how can we do that? Let's jump back into layout mode, okay? And we can set up an email uh, directly from this window. So first thing I'm going to do is bring this out a little bit. And I'm actually going to bring up one of our starter solutions. And if we go to File, New from Starter Solution, these are, uh, uh, I believe, like 14 or 16 uh, completely free uh, starter solutions. Uh, you know, this whole thing is about idea to iPad. And if you have an idea that it you know, matches these uh, starter solutions, it's a great place to start as well. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, bring this up. And I'll, I'll show you the reason why. I'm going to go to Customer Details. I'm going to go to layout mode on this. And I really like this uh, e uh, email icon. So I'm just going to grab that. I'm just going to copy that. All right. And I'm going to place that directly onto my layout. Okay. I think that's a pretty cool icon. So the uh, star solutions, they're not just a, a great point for you to uh, start entering data. It's a great way to reverse engineer, get some ideas, and also, you know, uh, steal some of this cool stuff that we've added. So thank you, Invoice to Solution. I'm going to close that out. And so now that we have this uh, little email icon, let's go ahead and set that up as a button. I'm going to say button setup. Okay. And I want to set this up as a uh, email. So we'll choose send email. Click specify. Okay. And I'm going to choose to send this to our the main email listed here. Okay and uh, subject we will leave empty and the message you know let's go ahead and we can add another calculation here as well okay we can um, add a, a greetings and a, a signature so I'm gonna add some literal text that says hi comma space alright and give me uh, the value in the first name field okay and then I'm gonna add some uh, you know, uh, return carriage returns okay and then you can add as much white space as you want in the cal in the uh, calculation window. This doesn't affect your calculation. It, it just helps you kind of organize a little bit better. So I'm just going to do that. Okay. So we have high uh, comma space, the value in the first name, a few uh, uh, carriage returns. And then I'm going to add another uh, literal text here in quotes. Thanks with the space and the carriage return. And I want you to add some more literal text right in the nook and a carriage return and add another little text here FileMaker Inc. I think it looks pretty good so we'll click OK click OK and I'm just gonna uh, duplicate that I just did a command D or control D on Windows we'll put that right up here okay and I'm gonna duplicate that again put that next to our ultimate uh, email okay and we'll specify this. We'll change this from the main email to the uh, alternate email. So this gets sent out to the alternate email. And click OK. All right. So let's exit layout, save, and let's take a look at some of this workflow that we just created. Again, do uh, Ryan uh, Manook 5201 Patrick Henry Drive. Santa Clara, California, 050, contact info, 408, okay, oops, say 408, 5, main email, we'll say Ryan underscore filemaker.com, okay, and we have that listed there. Let's see if um, our email button works, we'll click on that, and just like that, you see it, they pulled the value from the main email field and it added our literal text right uh, hi Ryan thanks uh, Ryan Manuk, FileMaker Inc looks like we need to make a change there really quickly I right, don't save let me jump to layout mode okay so just specify here just a really quick change oops I don't want to feel I want a calculation I want a Hi, space and first name and uh, give me a comma there and 
select OK. And we'll do the same thing over here to our calculation. OK. Oops, so we do want to space high, space the value in the first name and a comma and a bunch of carriage returns. Beautiful. Click OK. All right. It's about what? Um, 10, 15 minutes without talking. We were able to create a nice workflow, maximize the solution on the um, iOS, put in an email and a nice location for the resume, and even uh, give ourselves a little bit of a, um, you know, a, a personalized uh, feeling of the solution. So I think that's a, a really good start for um, explaining the, the power to create custom solutions, right? Taking FileMaker and aligning it to uh, the customer's um, uh, ID, uh, cus uh, the customer's needs. So now let's go ahead and uh, we'll talk about the data entry in the iOS environment. You saw me just typing information. It's really important that um, on the iOS, you know, we kind of limit uh, what uh, or how the users enter data, right? It's really important that on the iOS, everything is really touch driven. So that's what we want to go ahead and do. Okay. So let's go ahead and we will. Um, Make sure that uh, there's a few things that we can do so that uh, you know they don't have to constantly type on that keyboard. So, for example, uh, for this ranking, let's go ahead and uh, click on uh, this uh, inspector, and uh, we'll change this to a uh, pop-up menu, okay? And we'll put a value list, and we'll call this uh, ranking, and we'll say uh, this guy's a four-star, three-star, two-star, uh, one-star temp, okay? good for uh, the home okay we have these new on the inspector data type we have these brand new uh, keyboards where we can change a, uh, a uh, the keyboard that appears to um, a phone uh, type keyboard so it only shows the keys that uh, you would expect on the iOS right same thing for email addresses this will have the um, at symbol and the underscore uh, directly on that main keyboard screen okay Education completed. Maybe you want another pop over here as well. Okay. Change that to education completed. We'll say uh, master's um, uh, college, some college, high school, some high school. Click OK. All right. On the test scores, let's change this to um, a pop-up menu as well. And we'll say uh, words uh, per minute. And this could be um, greater than 80, 70 to 80, 60 to 70, uh, 50 to 60, or less than 50. Okay. Okay. Software score. We can change this to uh, under pop-up menu as well. We'll say software scores. We'll say uh, 100, uh, 90, 80, 70, or less than 70. Okay. And we can do the same thing for software score too, although we can use the uh, value list that we just created called software scores. Okay, so a lot of this stuff again is just going to be um, um, tapping and touching, like we would want um, our users to do on the iOS. Okay, status. Let's create uh, set this as a pop-up menu and create that a value as well. So status will say um, if they are uh, available, they're currently employed, or if they're uh, do not use. Right, staffing uh, agencies are always. Uh, uh, have that do not use listed as well if uh, you know maybe they missed a, an appointment or missed a a a, 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 a day of the job right uh, current employer pay type we can change this as a pop up menu as well we'll change this to um, pay type can be a uh, hourly or a salary okay and then for the wage we can format this as 
a um, oops, not a key bag. Can format this as. Let's see if I listed this as a text field. Yes, I want to change this as a number. Okay. Now in the inspector, I have the option to change this as a currency and a thousand separator. Okay. So we'll save that, jump back to browse mode, and you can see our ranking. All right, this guy's a four star. Academic history, college, test scores, all right, uh, 70 to 80, 90, software two score, he only scored a 70, okay? He is uh, available, okay? Pay type we wouldn't have because he's not employed yet, okay? But you can imagine, and, and we'll see this on the iOS soon, but we can do a lot of things in terms of having uh, everything be touch driven like you, your users would expect on iOS, which means you know faster workflow on your solution, more efficient, uh, more accurate, uh, less errors uh, in the solution. Okay, so I think it's a pretty good uh, um, idea of how we can leverage the uh, iOS um, and, and their formatting. Let's go ahead and bring this up here. Now we'll talk about uh, relating information. And this is really huge, right? Uh, you could have multiple information in, uh, or related information across multiple spreadsheets, or maybe you know uh, you have um, your uh, information organized in different tables. How do you bring them together? Well, this is a, this is the power of FileMaker, right? And to uh, demonstrate that, we're going to jump back to solution, and this is where we're going to talk about our notes field right here, right? We one of the most important things in a staffing uh, uh, solution that Barry wants us to uh, capture is, you know, notes like setting up appointments, uh, was he a good candidate, things like that. So what we're going to do is let's go ahead and go back to layout mode, okay? And in our field picker, we're going to click on this uh, database icon that we showed before, okay? We're going to create a new table. We're going to call that notes, okay? And uh, let's save. Oops. I change that. Uh, Templist change notes click create okay so now we have the notes table um, we're going to create a notes ID and make sure that each note is uh, unique all right and just like we did previously is uh, make an auto enter seal okay and I'm building it in this manage window so you can see another way to build out your tables we want a uh, temp ID so that we can create a relationship with the note to the proper candidate okay I'm sorry keep that a number create and then we want uh, a notes field and we also want uh, a timestamp okay and we'll change this to a timestamp a field type and click create now let's go to the relationships tab creating a relationship in file maker is just as simple as finding the uh, the matching data that you want and uh, dragging a line to uh, that uh, associated field in the uh, other table. So for example, I want the temp ID in this temp list to match the temp ID in the notes. Okay, so I'm going to drag that over. And just like that, we have a relationship in FileMaker. Okay, so I'm telling FileMaker when temp ID equals temp ID, allow me to share that data. Okay, allow me to share those notes for the appropriate temp. Okay, so I'm also going to, in this relationship, make sure that I have this uh, option checked, uh, allow creation of records in this table via this relationship. That's going to allow me to create notes uh, for the uh, particular temp. Okay, and we'll see that come into play in a second. So I'll click OK. Now, in order to show multiple related records, we have this um, object called a portal. Okay, and it's just what it sounds like a portal into another table. Okay, so I want to show uh, multiple related records from notes. Okay. Let's go ahead and sort this portal by TAM stamp uh, descending and click OK. Show vertical scroll bar. I'm just going to show uh, one note at a time and click OK. Show timestamp and notes. OK, here. We'll draw this out. OK. And we'll put the notes listed. Bring that out. Okay. 
and now let's go ahead and exit layout save okay and we can now add a note in uh, this layout so um, say uh, called Ryan and set up an interview with the hiring manager okay there we go Oop, one thing I did, didn't do here is to get our timestamp to automatically create we need to do an auto enter just like we did with our serial number right so I'm gonna say on creation uh, create that uh, timestamp so we'll click OK all right so let's create a new one called Ryan and set up second interview with the hiring manager okay and there we go right to the top with our timestamp listed there okay okay and that's really the uh, the power of being able to uh, associate different uh, uh, values and tables and records and tables with each other. I'd like to do the employer as well, but given the time, what I like to do is, you know, this is called idea to iPad. So what I'm going to do is get this solution onto the iPad. It's pretty quick, but, um, uh, you know, uh, we'll focus on how we can do that now and kind of give an example of uh, how the solution would work right on the iOS. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is uh, click on this uh, share button. Okay. And we have a few options. Uh, upload this to FileMaker server or share with clients. And share with clients means you're using your FileMaker Pro application as a host and using it as a peer to peer. So, first thing I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to upload this to my FileMaker server. And that's what you want. That's going to be your hub to your FileMaker solutions. That's what's going to allow you to have better performance, security, and reliability. So, I'm going to upload this to FileMaker server. Okay. Close that out. Choose my computer. All right. Don't look at my password. This is highly secure. All right. Next. Files ready to be uploaded. Okay. And I'm not going to open that with FileMaker. Just click done. Okay. So it's currently hosted with FileMaker server uh, in the back end. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to launch my um, FileMaker Go on my iPad. But first, I want to um, allow you to see my iPad, uh, the iPad Air that I have in my hands right now. So I'm going to launch Reflector, and that's going to allow me to AirPlay my iPad directly over to my screen. There it is. Okay. So what I'm going to do is uh, down to the bottom left, you'll see FileMaker Go. All right. And let's actually put this in landscape mode. I'm going to uh, tap on FileMaker Go. Okay. Down at the bottom, I'm going to tap on um, host and find my server. Okay. I see Ryan Manuk's FileMaker server, so I'll tap on that. Okay. We'll see the two staffing solution, so I'll tap on that as well. Okay. And there we go. Just like that, we have our solution right in uh, right in our hands. Okay. So now Barry, when he can't uh, or when he had uh, issues with uh, fire drills at uh, before hours or after hours, he now can access his information uh, no matter where he is, and uh, you know find the perfect candidates for uh, for a fill. Okay. So let me go ahead and uh, tap on uh, the uh, general info. You can see we have a. Works just like uh, expected, right? Home phone. Uh, may want to uh, tap on this email here. Okay, we have that updated uh, uh, greeting and signature listed there. We have it to the uh, value in the main um, email. Okay, we'll cancel that out. Education completed. Again, we have the uh, drop-down menus that allow us to uh, allow the user to quickly move through the solution, right? Okay, then 80 software scores. Okay. You can save as available, employed. Okay. We have uh, the notes listed here. If we want to add more notes, we can. Again, I'm going to take one finger and swipe through and look at the resume on that slide control. Okay. And just like that. All right. Without talking, that's what? Uh, 20 minutes, and we have a solution accessing all information that we didn't have before. And in that 20 minutes, I mean, that means what? One extra call, one extra order. How much does that uh, add up for a week or a month or even over a year for your business? Okay, I think that's a pretty good place to stop. What I'd like to do now is um, let's go ahead and jump into some Q&A. And I'd like to reintroduce uh, Stephen Day. 
And I believe you will go ahead and moderate some of these questions for us, and I'll go ahead and answer them. Thanks, Ryan. So we have a question here. Um, can I use my database on my iPad when I'm not online? All right, th this is a very, very good question. So you, what you saw me do is host my solution up to my FileMaker server, and I accessed it through my iPad, okay? Uh, that's one way to do it. So what about in areas where you don't have a network connection? You can actually store a local copy of your database on your iPad, okay? And how do you get it on your iPad? There's a few ways. One, you can use iTunes, okay? You can email the solution to yourself. You can use a third-party application like Dropbox. Uh, and you can even uh, you know put it up on a website and download it right to your solution. And then once you have, and to take it a step further, once you have it uh, on your solution, you're working on it uh, without a network and you're updating it, uh, you will have to uh, bring it back to the main file and perform some form of sync. So that could be an import. And there's a bunch of um, uh, third-party uh, applications that assist with the syncing as well. But uh, it will require um, uh, some method of uh, syncing to uh, set that... Uh, uh, or, or put that information back into your main file. Very good. And uh, do we have to do anything different for databases to work on Windows? Great question. Uh, no, FileMaker is uh, completely um, cross-platform for Mac and Windows. So everything that we built today, uh, you could uh, just open it right up on Windows, and uh, it should be smooth sailing. Um, there's some minor things, but maybe like uh, one or two fonts may appear a little bit larger on Windows. It's just the way that you know Windows and, and Mac uh, render differently. But all of, like the features and and like how you you know uh, mainly how you design it and things like that should uh, be pretty smooth sailing. Oh, yeah. Here's a great question: um, What is the advantage of using merge fields versus regular data fields? Uh, mainly, it's the merge fields just allow you to um, uh, allow you to grab the value. Uh, one advantage is that when I put the merge fields on there, the user can't, uh, you know, really just uh, edit that information. Uh, so for something like in a um, like an email template, uh, if I put a merge field at the top and I don't want that uh, name to be uh, messed with by the user, I can definitely put a field in there, and I can have uh, I can uh, turn off um, uh, entry in browse mode. But for the most part, it's just it's just a, a nice way to have that value without having any uh, 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 user error listed there. And one last question, uh, are custom touch keyboard types available? Uh, it's all uh, custom touch. It, we only have the, uh, the, uh, seven keyboards listed there. Um, I, I, I believe you're talking about how you saw the email and the phone. Um, we only have the seven available in that inspector. Very good. Thank you, Ryan. Okay. So, uh, I had a great time uh, speaking with you guys and I'll now uh, kick it off to uh, Stephen Day who like to wrap things up. Thank you, everyone, for attending. Um, please keep in mind that you can download FileMaker Go 13 for free. Um, that's available on the App Store. Um, and keep in mind, too, we've actually got the file training series basics for free. Um, that's available on the website in front of you. Um, there are some resources. Um, so with some options with volume licensing, please keep in mind that we have the annual option available to you um, with pricing starting at $9 for FileMaker Pro, um, $15 for Pro Advanced, and $29 a month for a FileMaker Server. Keep in mind this is billed annually, um, and there's some uh, minimum requirements with that. Um, please uh, contact your um, sales rep. Um, there's also great bundles avail available to you to get yourself started um, to build out your solutions. So thank you again, for everyone, for attending. On behalf of FileMaker, Ryan and myself, uh, speak to you soon. Thank you.